The enemy is a liar, but God is true. And so just seeing that for what it is and just looking and seeing through my life the lies of the enemy and the difference that it made because sometimes when we rely on what we're experiencing or what we feel, it can lead us wrong. But feelings are important to God. God wants us to live in joy. People sometimes explain joy in a way they make it some internal thing that isn't really expressed type of thing. And I, I just don't see that. And so I just want to talk about my journey of how I started experiencing joy consistently. Um, it was 21 days ago that I had been listening to some things. I've been going through the Glory Foundation class by Mike Spinks, and that's awesome and amazing. I listened to like a Tony Sai podcast, a Liz Wright podcast by com company Burning Hearts. And some of the stuff they were saying just really seemed to align. It seemed to be saying the same message about Christ reliance rather than self-reliance. And then I uh, had this random thought to listen to um, a Sid Roth episode that I had not listened to in quite a while because it was produced back in 2012. And so I listened to it and it was about focusing on your belly, focusing on your spirit. And um, first time I listened to that, it was just, it didn't really align with me. It didn't really make sense in some other things that I was thinking. And so I didn't really take it and run with it. And then maybe a friend of mine gave me a book by the same people as Dennis and Jen Clark, uh, who were interviewed by Sid Roth. They also wrote a book and it was practicing the presence of God. And, um, it just didn't, it didn't click for me. I didn't really think it was that great. And so <laughs> I just, just recently, 21 days ago, I, I listened to that and I just started focusing on my belly and it's like, whoa, do you even know what's inside of you? Do you know what Christ did? And all these things that I had been listening to, I had been studying and I had been just desiring, I'd even been dreaming about during the night. Um, they just started to click. They started to make sense. And even this thing with grace, and grace is really not a thing. It's more like the gospel. Um, even when people are saved, sometimes they're saved in the mix. They're saved, um, but it's in such a way where it's with fear. And so when you see the gospel through the lens of love, then things are completely changed. And so I just started focusing on, on this internal reality of the glory, internal reality of his Holy Spirit inside of me effortlessly. I wasn't even trying to focus because that was my thing. I'd, I'd be able to experience the presence of the Lord instantly because um, I had the general idea before that the Lord was inside of me type of thing. And he wasn't separate from me in a way. And uh, But it was contending to keep my focus. And that was the hard thing for me. So I, when people talked about experiencing the presence of the Lord and being drunk in spirit all the time, I'm like, how do they do that? And, <laughs> or joy, 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 joy. And what I realized is it's not about doing. Just get rid of the doing. Just quit it. And um, that could be really, really depressing when you come to the end of that, of it's not about doing. Like, oh my goodness, I can't fix myself. This is awful. I don't know what to do now. But when you come to Christ, you see, whoa, you just step in by belief. You step into his rest by belief. Because it's already done. I mean, he was a lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. It was already all done. I mean, the problem was even taken care of before we made a mistake. And so he came to earth. He fulfilled that in the physical. So our physical lives can be changed. Our physical lives can be impacted. He isn't just about the spiritual. He isn't just about after you die. But it's the now. The kingdom in he of heaven is at hand. The kingdom is now. And when you realize that the kingdom of God is inside of you, that changes everything. You're no longer contending and contending and trying and trying and doing and doing to get breakthrough. But then you realize that you already have breakthrough. And when you realize that you already have breakthrough, you're just confident because you already know, you already know the end of it. You already know the end of it. That's your starting place, the end of it. And you look back from there and you see, oh, it's already done. And so I'm not saying that demonic things don't exist. I'm not saying sickness does not exist because it certainly does. 
But when you focus on it already being done, as it is in the spirit, as Jesus already 100% paid for, then as you focus on that, things just start to click. They start to align. And it's not by your efforts, but it's by yielding to the spirit. And when you realize that it's not by your efforts, but it's by yielding to the spirit, suddenly you put on Christ. You put on his strength. Whoa, you are leaning on your own understanding, but you're acknowledging him in all your ways. And he will make your path straight. And when you see that, it is, it's like you have a passion inside that is not self-produced. And when it's not self-produced, you don't have to maintain it by your own efforts. Because that was the thing, like I'd seen a lot of people that... Um, you know, they get really touched at a conference by God or they have some awesome breakthrough in their life. Then just maybe a few weeks later, even they're back to their same old patterns. It's like it never happened. I didn't want to be that person. And I just, I started pursuing the Lord on my own efforts and in some ways experiencing rest, some ways experiencing love, but it was always a mix, you know, a mix of a little bit of my effort and a mix of what he did type of thing. And that's why in some ways it was, easy in some ways it was hard but it's really kind of hard in some ways of just abiding in him and so when I start feeling like whatever a little anxiety come against me um I just go oh instead of trying to fight it like get it to come off me get the victory so to speak um I just think oh the victory's won thank you Lord for your perfect love yay <laughs> thank you Lord for your spirit inside of me uh, and I could, and you know where it talks about abiding the vine in John 15? Um, I believe it says that we could do nothing in ourselves. Whoa! So when you see that, it frees you from you. It frees you from trying. Wow. And when you are freed from trying, then you're just trusting. It's easy, easy, peasy, easy, peasy. Because... We're meant to live in the spirit. We're meant to renew our minds by the spirit. And so it's like when you start focusing on the spirit, you just automatically, some of your thinking starts changing. Some of your thinking starts aligning with your spirit. Um, and it's like you're in the right order. You're not mind first, then body, then spirit. You're spirit, mind, body. And I just... I just love this. I don't want to live any other place because I'm experiencing the presence of the Lord 24 seven and I'm not even trying to, I'm just focusing on the spirit within me and in my belly. And it's just like, Whoa, there's a river there. And you know, where it talks about, um, wherever the river goes, it brings life. I don't, the river is inside of you. As you focus on the river, you get the river, whatever you focus on, you, you're going to, start experiencing more of that and as I focus on this river it's like you know I kind of had like some pain here like it was more like tension type of pain but that just left I wasn't trying and um since February 2014 I had like a weird I don't know something slipped or got pinched in my back like a small in my back and I had just been really warring against that and trying to get rid of it and in some ways it was like my hope was deferred and I was I felt like okay I know like Jesus said he, he, he went about healing all and when people came to him and asked him is it your will to heal me that he said yes and so that's settled and um not to mention by his stripes that you are healed so he because he already did it he can't even retract his word on that um, I just, I just started, whatever I was doing, I would just be walking to the post office and I just quick lay my hand on my back. I am healed. And I'm not going to say I feel it a hundred percent gone, but I'm going to say I feel actually the pain drastically reduced and I wasn't even like trying, praying really hard, any of that stuff. In the scripture, uh, by grace, you are saved through faith. It is a gift to God, not of yourselves, lest anyone should boast. You know what that is? Because a lot of people quote that at like when somebody gets born again, but it's more than that. Salvation is sozo. It is the whole package. It is everything Jesus paid for. It is the redemption that from Adam's mistake and then some. And so when you realize that um, Jesus Christ did not just come to save you 
uh, for after you die, but for now, it could revolutionize your whole life. The good news actually looks good. I mean, it's, it's really, 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 really good. It's not just get out of hell free card. It's you get, get to live in the spirit. You get to live righteousness and peace. And uh, you get to live in joy and uh, illogical joy. I mean, you get to have peace that surpasses all understanding. And um, wow, you, you are actually seated with Christ in heavenly places. And when you see that, you could realize, oh, I could see heaven any time. I could see heaven while I'm washing my dishes. Or I could see heaven while I'm driving my car, but I wouldn't recommend driving your car first. <laughs> Get that after you're used to it, after that, after you're used to that reality. Um, and when you see that, oh, in him I am complete, who is the head over every power and principality. Does it not say that? And think that you're in him. And remember that scripture too, where it talks about in Ephesians 1 and 2, about Christ being the above every power and principality, every name that is named in heaven or on earth. And he is seated above that. Well, it, it links his identity with our identity. And it says you are seated with Christ. So, oh my goodness, we've been warring from the, the wrong place. So that's why people get hurt in warfare, is they're warring from the wrong place. They're warring acting like they're down here on the earth, which is true. The Lord has given the earth to the sons of men. But when they see who they are in Christ, then suddenly it's, it's like they're not... They're not trying to war really, really hard. It's like they see it and they're like, oh, you're already defeated. Move now. I'm in Christ. I'm in his name. <laughs> and it does. It's because it's not about your own strength. Because on your own strength, you're going to get beat up by the spirit world. It's going to be awful. And there's a lot of people trying to fight the devil, fight their flesh and all this stuff. And it's not working for them. Why? Because it's the wrong perspective. And the enemy is lying to them about uh, him not being defeated. Because that's the power the enemy has. I mean, the only power he has is really lies. And keeps people from seeing who they really are in Christ. Because when they see who they really are and they manifest their sonship, suddenly the demonic is going to be no big deal because they're already defeated. And so they'll start losing their power over people. I mean, deliverance is so easy. I don't know if you believe in deliverance on Christians, but... I believe the people of God can be oppressed by the enemy. I don't believe that's a good thing. I, I do believe it happens. But the people need to experience freedom. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He literally cannot change. The only thing that could change is us, the covenant. Us or the covenant. So a lot of people are still living in the other covenant. And so that's how they have, why they have problems reconciling what God is like. And so when you see that he is love, that even the covenant um, that was established in Mount Oreb was not what God desired because like what he desired is everybody would come up the mountain everybody would know him and they're like whoa 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 no 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 too scary and because of their shame because of their sin that was not removed they still had a consciousness of sin and so when Christ came he actually removed that so if that's true why do people still deal with guilt why do people still deal with shame and just all this icky yucky feelings I'll tell you my story is one night um, in December 2015 I I had just been focusing on the spirit for you know, maybe a couple weeks a couple days I don't remember which and I just started focusing on my belly and I realized oh my goodness I'm not even like doubting down here like sometimes I can try to logic stuff out here and this still needs to be re renewed some and I, I don't doubt down here and so I I just started focusing on that I realized there's this perfect faith. There's a full measure of the Spirit. There is Christ. I said, I have a completely light heart. And when I did, I actually experienced that. 
for the first time in three years. Mm. I wasn't trying to figure out a formula. I wasn't trying to do or get rid of it or figure it out what it was. But I was just relying on the river within, Christ within, Jesus. And everything that he has already done. And instantly that stuff lifted. Spirits that have been attached to that condemnation just stuff just gone. So Lord, I pray that right now for people that are listening, that they would know your love like never before. That they would see who they are in you. That they would no longer be a slave. Father, thank you that you call them no longer a slave to fear. But you sent the spirit of the Son into their hearts to cry, Abba, Father. He has sealed you with his spirit. Literally. Nothing can separate you from his love. You are one with him. He has grafted you in. He is above every name that is named. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, and continues in it, it is and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in all that he does.
What if you could literally be fearless in everything you do? What if there is a better way than just trying to get out your comfort zone? What if there's a better way than trying to get out of your comfort zone? What if the love of Christ could actually compel you, not force you in the way of feeling guilty about it, but actually energize you and make you joyful by the Spirit? What if it wasn't hard to share the good news, but the good news was actually good? What if God likes you? What if he will never leave you or forsake you ever? What if instead of by harshness, it's by kindness that people are drawn to repentance to change their mind. What if it's not going to be by your own power, but it's going to be by the Spirit? What if everything you see around you is changed to the truth? What if you are actually no longer a slave to sin? What if you actually love with an everlasting love? What, if, what happens if you are like he is in this world? What if you aren't under judgment? What if God would never be angry at you again? What if the way that you've seen things is not the way that it is? And if the way that it is is actually way better than what you've seen? What if you hate division so much that you radiate peace? What if it wasn't scary to lay hands on people that had blind eyes and deaf ears? What if you could actually have confidence that you would see it done? What if it's already all done and it's just stepping into it by faith? That it isn't hard. It isn't a formula. What if the Christian life is not hard? but it's the enablement of the spirit that is actually life and peace. What if heaven is actually all around you? What if you no longer hate your brother, but you forgive as Christ has forgiven you? What if you're already forgiven? What if you are 100% forgiven from your past, present, and future? What would you do? How would you live? What would you do if you really are free from sin? What would you do if you're no longer a slave to sin? What if he has set you free? What if you're no longer poor? What if you no longer have to defend yourself, but he defends you because you trust in him, you experience it? 